Well, uh, today, Kitsa and myself are representing the uh, Ocean Best Practices Working Group that was created in the framework of Audit and Atlantis projects um, originally, but fortunately our community has grown during the last uh, year and a half. Other members of the working group are today present here, like um, Cindy, Pauline, and also Pierre Luigi. But I'm not sure whether he's again here or not. But, well, let's start. I would like uh, we to think uh, a little bit about the future in a few years' time and what would we expect to see in, in, in about the topic of uh, best practices for ocean observing. So how, how, what would we like to, to see? Um, in our opinion, the minimum that we should claim for is to have agreed methods for every activity in ocean observing research operations and applications that are broadly adopted. So to achieve this um, vision, uh, what we would like to propose is to provide and sustain a system which fosters collaboration, consensus building and innovation by providing coordinated and global access to best practices across ocean sciences. But to reach this uh, target, uh, let's say there are a few challenges that we need to overcome first. Um, and they are related with mostly with uh, quality of the best practices documentation that varies widely across the, the ocean observing communities. We've got also problems with the contents and formats of these best practices that they also vary, even the um, information that is contained and the metadata. Also, we have limitations with machine readability and, and that is a constraint in terms of comparing best practices. And two more things. One is sustainability that is often not guaranteed. So sometimes what we have is projects that create best practices and when the project ends, then the, the best practices potentially may disappear too. And the lack, last but not least, the, the lack of coordination and awareness among projects and organizations that bring us the chance of reinventing the wheel, um, even if there's no need for that. So once we are able to um, overcome this situation, we are then in position to give a solution that provides a living, sustained and comprehensive system for ocean observing best practices that facilitates also academic uh, recognition through peer review process and um, the assignment of persistent identifiers like DOIs, of course. Then giving uh, as well um, improved visibility for search engines uh, providing also a training resources and more important setting greater interoperability across programs and institutions that this is very important so once uh, in this scenario then we wouldn't be able not only to cover um, these benefits for the ocean observing community but also to cover a very important thing that is um, um, cover the need for uh, harmonization of methodologies uh, in a global scale. That would be the, the best situation for sure. So I have to run a little bit, but uh, the system that we propose actually uh, is designed to ingest best practices that are related with any of the steps of the ocean observing value chain. And even in any type of, of format. So that includes uh, not only standard operational procedures, but also manuals, guidelines, uh, frameworks, or recommendations, etc. So I very much like this picture because uh, here there's not only a representation of the core members of the working group, but also representatives of the different communities that are currently involved in this initiative. And by the way, I'm, I'm very happy to see here some of, of those uh, representatives, not, not only people from, from Europe, but also from the US, Australia, and, and Japan. By the way, this is one of the first things that we agreed uh, during the uh, last meeting that we had in, in Paris last year. We agreed many other things, but this was the first, and, and it's very important, which is a definition of what is a best practice. And let me read it for you, because I consider this is important. So, a community best practice is a methodology that has repeatedly produced superior results relative to other methodologies with the same objective. And attention here, to be fully elevated to a best practice, a promising method needs to be adopted and employed by multiple organizations. And this is a key issue here because, uh, well, 
Pierluigi presented yesterday all the fair principles applied in best practices, so I'm going to skip this. But one of the most relevant things here is to be able to reuse these best practices, we need to meet with the domain-relevant community methodologies. And this thing is something that it is our responsibility as, our, as a community. So, and, and this involves everything of us. So everything of us are not only invited, but required to sustain the system, because otherwise it wouldn't happen at all. Well, how can we contribute as a community to this uh, system proposed? Well, the first issue for sure is contributing to the repository, using and submitting best practices and becoming an advocate of, of, of this. But there are also other ways. So we've got a peer review um, process in, in this system. So normally best practices are created by experts and reviewed by experts, but it's good practice, of course, and open this to a broader uh, community. So that's one of the, and, and release this to a, a, a broader community. So this is one of the reasons why we incorporated this, and also, of course, to give credit to the um, people that is working in, in, in towards this harmonization, because not, not always are scientists that publicate uh, all the, the work, but also technicians and, and other people related into the value chain. Mm, so the peer review uh, process is supported by Frontiers in Marine Science Best Practices in Ocean Observing Marine Topic uh, that is run by Johannes Kanstensen and just three things. It's an open access journal. It has a very open process uh, review and the most important is linked to the repository. So the main idea is that we write up a kind of journal type uh, paper uh, that is linked to the best practice document that is already submitted in the repository. But apart from these two issues, there are other important things that we can do uh, to get engaged with, with this community, with this uh, project, and mostly are contributing to the working group. This is one of, of the main issues, so we, we, we are very open to, to receive your active particip participation or even giving us uh, feedback. And the other important uh, thing is that we would love to hear from you about um, rising areas and opportunity for outreach and for uh, capability, uh, capacity building. Well, that's a very short summary, but I would like to leave uh, more time for Peter because uh, I'm sure he has many other things to, to say. Thank you. You were very fast, Christian. Well, <laughs> oh, it's not finished yet. <laughs> okay, so what is the way forward? Because so far it's, we've been talking mostly about plants, what we want to do. Well, what we need, first of all, of course, is a long-term long home for the ocean best practices system. And it has to be inclusive. Uh, for I mean, and Christian already pointed that out a bit. Um, so far within IOD, we have often been working with uh, wise old men and women in a small room deciding on what should be standard or what should be something that should be used as a guideline. The problem is that we are always fishing in the, small, in the same small pond. And so the people who are actually submitting a candidate standard or guideline are often then also the ones who have to uh, review those. And that doesn't really work. So we're going to work much more now on maybe like a TripAdvisor model where end users can say, OK, I used this, this, uh, this practice and I really liked it. It worked really well. So you, they can give their seal of approval. And that will be combined with the peer review journal. So that way you get a bit more of a balanced uh, assessment of uh, these practices. So IOC of UNESCO, why? Well, IOC has been around since 1960. IOD has been around since 1961. And we assume will be around for a bit much longer. So that, uh, for, with that in mind, it was said, OK, maybe IOC of UNESCO should then be the, the host of this system. Um, I already mentioned, it's going to be an e-repository. Um, again, we are not reinventing the wheel. We've been hosting and developing e-repositories for quite a number of years, and Pauline Simpson has been quite active and instrumental in making all this happen. Um, we'll also do some, we'll use some of the technology will be hosted in uh, Amazon Cloud, which was also already mentioned this week. So we're trying to use the most advanced technologies. And IOC will offer the IT support. Now, how will this uh, come to, uh, to, to happen? Well, last week there was the JCOM Management Committee, who were very enthusiastic about the system, and they are willing to join. Now, Goose 
the, the Goose ma Management Committee will also uh, con uh, discuss this and they will then jointly with IOD go to the IOC Assembly uh, next year in June uh, to submit a proposal for the Ocean Best Practices System project, assuming that the IOD session in January is in agreement with that, but I don't see why uh, IOD would object. Uh, then a steering group will be established, which is our usual way of how we uh, manage projects with the project manager, uh, a chief editor, because whatever is submitted into the system, there has to be some quality control. Of course, the technical manager and then representatives of the various partner communities that are participating. You saw the, the diagram uh, of uh, Christian early, early with all the logos in it. Those are all partners who already participated in Atlantos and hopefully they will move also into the new project. Now, where does this fit in a bigger picture? Um, IOC has also instructed IOD to start working on this IOC Ocean Data and Information System. And the wise words there, uh, they say to improve the accessibility and interoperability of existing data and information and to contribute to the development of a global ocean data and information system to be referred to as the IOC ODIS, leveraging established solutions where possible. And that last uh, part of the sentence is, of course, very important. Uh, we are not reinventing the wheel. IOC is too small, doesn't have enough money to spend a hundred millions, hundreds of millions to develop a new uh, global ocean data system. So uh, we have to leverage existing systems such as knowledge platform efforts, thematic networks like CDATANET, like EMOTNET, AODN. Um, we have to work with the metadata and data brokering and exchange, semantics and other foundation activities which we heard about this week, also platforms that have been developed, and of course, last but not least, the sharing of these best practices. Now, the concept of all this, well, let's imagine it as a department store to start with. A department store with uh, menswear, women's wear, watches, and so you have the, on one side you have the IOC programs, not only IOD, but also Goose, Tsunami, Ocean Science, and they all have a number of projects, a number of activities, where already a number of member states work together to develop certain products or services. And on the other hand, you have all our 149 member states who also have data systems, data centers, products and services. And we have to bring that all together in that department store. Of course, at the later stage, and we heard also the analogy with Amazon, and now you, could, you have to go into the department store and go look for what you need. Well, you could also send your personal shopper, who then goes and finds your things, or you can use the Amazon approach where you type in what you need and the system will find it for you. That's the future. Now, all these, pro all these programs have their projects, their activities, and all of them publish uh, I IOC manuals and guides and other guiding material. All that will be now accessible to the uh, Ocean Best Practices system. So not only standards, but all those guidelines and these practices that hopefully become best practices. Oops, what happened? Ah, okay, two minutes, yes. Uh, training, it's a good thing to have all these best practices accessible through one point, but if we want them to be used, they have to, people have to be trained. Young scientists, young data scientists coming into the system, they have to be trained. Again, we're not going to reinvent something. We already have something called Ocean Teacher Global Academy. Looking a little bit further, in 2021, uh, the UN Decade on Ocean Science for Sustainable Development will start. And during 10 years, um, all member states will focus their efforts in ocean science on this decade. But it's not only IOC. IOC is the leader, the lead, but it will involve a lot of other uh, UN organizations and, of course, all their members and member states. That allows us then to pull all this a bit more open to these other UN agencies and also multiple stakeholders. When, when you're talking about sustainable development, you have to think uh, multi-sectoral. For example, that may be uh, ministries of economy, um, population, statistics, all that will have to be become accessible through ODIS if it all works out as we plan. So that's it. <laughs>